I'm Zaina Anwar um, and I'm a founding member of um, Sisters in Islam um, which is a women's rights group in Malaysia that works on women's rights um, from an Islamic framework and Sisters in Islam also initiated a global movement called Musawa which is equality in Arabic. It's a global movement for equality and justice in the Muslim family. I was born in Johor Bahru, um, which is right at the southern tip um, of Malaysia. Um, went to an English school, so I had a very liberal um, education. Went through a very liberal, progressive um, education system in the English language where we were exposed to literature and poetry and very multiracial upbringing and very multiracial childhood. And, you know, I had, a, I think, a very blessed upbringing in the sense that um, my father was a great reader so he was surrounded he was always reading newspapers like three daily newspapers a day magazines and the radio he was always listening to the BBC World Service and listening to the news so I kind of like followed him I can listen to the world news on the hour every hour <laughs> why I'm like I, I, you know because you kind of like get something new all the time so he was like that you know every his breakfast time his lunch time his dinner time um, was dictated by news hour my neighborhood was a multicultural neighborhood I had neighbors who are Chinese and Indians and Malays my school was also very multicultural multi-ethnic so I grew up in that very open you know progressive a true Malaysian environment, you know, that really reflects the plurality, the rich pl plurality of living in Malaysia. Yeah, I was once asked whether I was born, I was a born leader, and I said no, I was a born rabble, I was such a rabble at home, um, in school, you know, I was always questioning why, 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 and I, I don't know why. <laughs> You know, um, so I was always like when my mother asks me to do something or if she scolds me, um, you know, I always have an answer and her, her favorite word to me was I say one word, you say ten words, you know, she was always telling me that. Um, and school too, school in particular, um, I guess some teachers would find me a difficult student because I challenge them all the time. You know, I remember asking my teacher, you know, why is Stanford Raffles the founder of Singapore? You know, Singapore existed before Stanford Raffles came. There was a Sultan, there was a Malay community living, you know, um, in, along the Singapore River, at the mouth of the Singapore River. There's a whole huge Malay community in Singapore. Why is it when Stanford Raffles comes, then he is the founder, Singapore is founded. And I remember my, my history teacher could not answer that question um, you know and I had to stand outside in the Sun for asking a question that she did not have an answer for so I used to be punished throughout my school life from standard one to form five when I was already 16 17 years old because I was you know rebellious and asking questions and breaking rules all the time breaking all the school rules everything <laughs> I studied journalism in Malaysia and in the United States in Boston um, and when I came back um, from Boston you know I worked in the newspaper in the in the New Straits Times and in the 1980 I began to go to cover politics um, in Malaysia and foreign policy and all that and that was when I began to cover um, the rivalry between UMNO the dominant Malay party in the ruling coalition and PAS the Islamic party um, and 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 the growing the use of Islam um, to win support over the people so it was the height of you know um, the radicalization of the Islamic party um, in Malaysia when they declared um, you know um, Malays who supported um, who work together with non-Malays as infidels and UMNO is an infidel party um, and therefore you cannot cooperate, you cannot support an infidel party. If you're a Muslim, you have to support an Islamist party that believes in Islam, that wants to establish an Islamic state and have the Hudud law. I grew up with religion. 
I went to religious school um, for five years. My parents are both, you know, uh, practicing Muslims, were both practicing Muslims who prayed five times a day. But I never grew up with this idea that the religion is an unjust religion. You know, where the discrimination happens, the gender discrimination happens, um, you know, it's always about tradition. It's always about culture. That's how it is. But that's, you know, that, that men don't have to do housework and women had to do housework, you know. It's never justified in the name of God and in the name of religion. So to be confronted as an adult, and, and even in my five years of religious education, in, in, in religious school, none of my teachers ever said that men are superior to women um, in Islam. You know, it was, the teaching was always about being a good person, being a good citizen, a good daughter, you know, a good human being, you know, being respectful of your parents. So it was always about being good, you know, that's my idea of religion. That's how I grew up with the religion, you know, being a good person. Um, and, um, and so to be confronted as an adult with this religion that I could not recognize and, and, and to me was an affront to my faith in God and in a just God. So I grew up with a very strong sense that God is just, that Islam is just. So that is a fundamental article of faith for me. And to be confronted by men who use religion to justify oppression and discrimination against women, I mean, was, it was just an outrage um, for me. We know from day one, we get attacked, we get threats, we get demonized and being accused of anti-God, anti-Islam, anti-Quran. It is our diversity, our plurality of you know, races, ethnic groups, religions that have brought the wealth to this country.